What's up everybody and welcome back to the channel. This is your weekly reactor hunt video. I make one of these every Tuesday for the first to send it because every Tuesday they reset the reactors for the week and essentially different reactors can spawn in different areas of the map. In other words, enabling you to basically target farm reactors. This is of course done on hard difficulty and you can very easily access this information by just pressing map and then F and then basically selecting the reactor type you want at the top and then it'll essentially lead you to where you need to go farm this now those of you that are familiar with my channel and the way that i do these videos is that i essentially try to focus on high density areas where you can farm a maximum amount of reactors in a short amount of time thereby increasing your yield and giving you much more opportunities to get what is known as a guard roll or a best in slot reactor so what i mean by high density areas and areas that you can get the maximum amount of reactors can be something like sterile land and basically doing anticipated ambush point or for example like let's say something like echo swamp and doing environment contamination zone now, both of these are very short to complete missions and have a decent amount of enemies in them and you can essentially farm them very very fast with a character like bunny and that will give you a huge amount of these reactors so on to this week at hand now those of you that watched my video last week will know that i complained a little bit and said it was a poopies week for reactors and it was time for us to go touch grass and play some other games and unfortunately i gotta say this week is kind of like the same there really isn't any of the meta reactor picks like for example if i just pull some random ones out of out of uh, out of a hat here right so we can say fire and we can say tech that is of course a very popular pick because it covers lepic and it covers isomo so I can say that and that will spit out four different areas for us to go. That being the Aurora Forest, which has no decent missions to really farm. The Derelict Covert, kind of like the same. Uh, Lumberyard, also not great, with maybe the exception of Frontline Base. But this is for high-powered rounds, which is basically for Piercing Light and Afterglow, which is not a weapon that you necessarily want on either Izumo or Lepic. And then we have Starfall Road, once again, just not great. So then we can continue on like this right let's say for example you're looking for a great viesa reactor so we can say chill and we can leave it on tech because that's viesa so we have grand square which gives us special rounds which is clairvoyance uh, you know a uh, secret garden gregs and so on but again no really great missions on here with maybe the exception of kingston surveillance radar but once again just really not any options that you can just farm just insane amounts at the time However, you can absolutely go farm Kingston Surveillance Radar. It's not terrible, but this is also not great. Uh, so yeah, the list goes kind of on and there really isn't anything special. However, with one big exception. Now, if you are someone that enjoys playing Sharon, and she's certainly seen a resurgence, not a resurgence really, but her popularity is on the up and up. She's definitely a, a character that I think a lot of people as a descendant misjudged her strength and her utility. First of all, she is really powerful from a bullet platform uh, perspective but she's also really really powerful in the way that she synergizes with teams because of the way that she can debuff enemies and what i mean by that is of course if you go to her uh her transcendent mods she has a transcendent mod called battle suit melting rounds and essentially what this does is it turns and let me just move my face over here it turns your uh, battles, this skill, your third skill, into battles with melting rounds. And basically, when you hit the enemy with this, it uh, decreases their defense by 40%, as well as their electric resistance by 40%. And so this in combination with other strong descendants that are dealing a lot of damage uh, is really, really useful against some of the more powerful uh, intercept bosses like Gluttony. And she's just phenomenal. Then also you can further on combine it with something like Nazestras. Nazestras, of course, also with its unique ability actually produces a debuff on that defense. As you can see here, Devotion Mark minus 30% if you have four out of four Nazestras. So why am I telling you all of this? Well, it just so happens to be that this week is a really good week to farm for Sharon. Now, generally speaking, your reactor choice on Sharon doesn't matter all that much because the point is what you're trying to do is you just really care about the substats. You want skill duration up and you want skill cooldown like I have on this one here. And it doesn't really matter what the rest are because you're not really dealing damage with your skills. You are a bullet platform. However, first of all, we don't know if that's always going to be the case. We haven't seen her ultimate descendant yet. So it's entirely possible that she will get some transcendent mods, which will make her skill based builds really good. But then on the other hand, also her skill based builds aren't that bad at all. They're pretty damn good for mobbing. 
and if you go to her descendant module here uh, this area here we can see that the two kinds of uh damage dealing skills that she has cut off beam and flash short sword are both electric and fusion so this is important because this week is a fantastic week to farm electric and fusion and that of course will cover her so if we go here and we say electric and we say fusion we are going to get mirage stone and we're going to get fallen arc now in both of these cases this is this is okay uh, i mean fallen arc is not necessarily the best place to farm but there are some missions here like shipyard or so that can give a decent amount of reactors but the real star here this week is that in mirage stone we can fi farm for an impact rounds version of her best in slot reactor that means we can farm for a reactor that you can have a nazestrus like mounting on which is huge so specifically in mirage stone what you want to be doing is you want to be farming this outpost over here and this is something that i've highlighted a lot in my previous videos like this you can do this with a, a bunny or a valby valby works best because you basically recreate the valby run within this outpost so you essentially just uh unlock all the reactors basically blow them up and then you just start going on the outskirts of the outpost just killing all the enemies as they spawn making sure not to damage the boss in the middle uh, you can very easily accomplish this with a valby that you don't increase the radius of her skills as well as a bunny that you don't increase the radius and you can essentially farm for the entire two and a half minutes and you can get a lot of reactors plus just a whole bunch of xp weapon proficiency gold and kuiper so this is a really really good farm this week and it can almost in a way future proof us a little bit when it comes to her because while uh, definitely her skill based builds are not best in slot right now you can get yourself a reactor that is nazestrus mounted and has the right substats and the right configuration on it that could potentially very be very useful down the line but just as a last little thing here before i let you go of course what you're looking at from a substats perspective is right now at this point in time with battle suit melting rounds her base start uh, like substats are skill duration up and skill cooldown because both of those will affect your ability to use that skill as much as possible however as you are farming for reactors for this week keep an eye out for reactors that have additional damage to colossus and something like skill crit damage that is a best in slot reactor for a uh, reactor that is focused on skill damage to a colossus and then of course if you're looking for something that's good at mobbing you can maybe use something like again skill duration up and skill cooldown is good here but you can also maybe use something like um you know radius or something like that but absolutely this is what you should be farming this week if sharon is in your peripheral and something that you want to be doing with her down the line she's really really good in groups right now and as we have another really tough void intercept boss coming in october we will most likely see her popularity rise even more because as opposed to trying to burst the boss down which a lot of the new bosses are kind of like immune to because they're so tough she takes it from the other perspective where you are actually dropping the defense of the boss thereby empowering the rest of your team and you can essentially take the boss down the old-fashioned way but that's it for the video thank you so much for watching especially if you made it this far a short one this week like i said not a lot of reactors for us to go target farm and get a huge amount to drop from we've had two weeks uh, in a row now which have not been as great as the weeks prior to them but our bad luck's bound to break sooner than later other than that it's just super important to me that you have a fantastic morning afternoon evening wherever you are in the world till next video fucking cheers